welcome to video two of this five part video series on certs. And in this video, we're going to talk very briefly about simplifying certs and the process of simplifying certs. I'm going to start by writing down some numbers. Just think about what these numbers are. One, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, and the dot, 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 that just represents, obviously this list does go on uh, for longer, but I'm going to stop there. And I'm hoping that you realise that these numbers are actually the square numbers. And these are going to be really important for today. And so therefore, really important for this topic. And I'll introduce how those square numbers come about as being an important feature of today's questions. So let's have a look at an example and the simplifying technique. So I'm going to say the square root of 18, which is a cert. Now, it's really important here to recognise that when we simplify certs, we're being asked to simplify certs, we want to reduce the number inside the square root to its lowest terms. So let's have a look at the number 18. 18 can be written as 18 times 1, or 9 times 2, or 3 or well, let's just keep the pattern going, 6 times 3. I'm going to highlight two of these numbers. And you'll notice that 9 and 1 pop up in our list over here. Now, 1 really isn't an important square number for this context. 1 doesn't help us too much, but 9 does. What we can actually do now is we can write down the square root of 18 is equal to the square root of 9 times 2. And one of our third arithmetic rules is that if you have two numbers multiplied under a square root, you can separate them to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Let me write that down here generally. If you have the square root of AB, this is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. And that's an important rule, a multiplication rule for thirds. Now, the square root of 9 times 2 is equal to 3 root 2 because we know that the square root of 9 is 3. So the rule here is if you're trying to simplify thirds, you really want to get the original number, in this case 18, and find square factors, because square factors will do this. And that's why this list is so important, because they're our square factors. We're looking for those numbers as factors of the bigger ones. Let's have a look at another example, B square root 200. Now, 200 has three square factors. First of all, it can be written as 4 times 25, uh, sorry, 4 times 50, or it can be written down as 25 times 8, or it can be written down as 100 times 2. And this will happen. You'll often get situations where there's more than one square factor. If you notice more than one square factor, go for the largest. Always get the largest one out as the common factor and reduce it as quick as you possibly can. But it won't matter. So let's imagine first of all we went for the largest. This is equal to the square root of 100 times 2, which is equal to the square root of 100 times by the square root of 2, which is equal to 10 times root 2. And we don't need that multiplication symbol there. If, on the other hand, and this is a different way of doing it, we didn't notice the 100 factor, you might only notice the 4 factor, in which case you write it down as 4 times 50, which is equal to the square root of 4 times by the square root of 50, and this is equal to 2 root 50. Always make sure that you have checked for more factors as you go along. So does 50 have any square factors? And at this point, you might say, hold on a second, it does. 2 root 25 times 2, which is equal to 2 times root 25 times root 2. And root 25 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 root 2, which is the same answer as we got. It really doesn't matter which way around you go. If you notice a big square factor, then you're going to have three lines of working. If you don't notice a big square factor, well, you might end up with five or six lines of working. Does it really matter? Probably not. Speed is the only thing that you might gain here. 
make sure though that you check for extra square factors. Now let's just do one very quickly that's algebraic. Our square numbers won't help us with this one. The square root of a squared b cubed. Imagine if you had this question. So now we have to take a step back and recognize that this is a little bit more complex, but we're still just looking for square numbers. That's all. So now let's see if we can see these square numbers. Well, I can see that a squared is a square number. Because if I think about it, the square root of a squared is just a. So if a is defined as a whole number, um, or whatever the number is, the simplification of the square root of a squared is a. So as soon as I see that a squared, I know I've got a square number. So I can now write this down as a times the square root of b cubed. Now I'm looking for, are there any square factors of b cubed? Well actually, yes there is. a times the square root of b squared times b. And b squared is a square number. So I can write this down as a times the square root of b squared times the square root of b. And the square root of b squared is just b, so I get a b root b. And this would be in its simplest form. So as another little side list over here, a squared is a square number, and a to the power 4 is equal to a squared squared, and a to the power 6 is equal to a cubed squared, and a to the power of 8 is equal to a to the power of 4 squared, so on and so forth. So there actually any even power is a square number. And if you've got an odd power, well you can take, you can split it up using the index laws into an even power and an odd power, or and one, and you can take out that square factor there. So there we have an algebraic example as well. All the best.